<laughs> what's good guys welcome back to another vlog today i'm going to be changing my valve cover and the gaskets and my power steering pump i picked up a valve cover yesterday it's orange but it'll do for now i'll probably paint it a different time but i just want to get this oil leak fixed and all that stuff so i'm about to get to it to take the power stand pump off you have to remove these lines it's a 19 millimeter at the top and a 22 millimeter i already took them off so mm. the next step is going to be taking these 13 millimeter bolts off for the pulley itself because it's easier to do it while it's here and then there are also two bolts at the top two 13s this one right here and another one on the left of it and there's one more bolt back here and then after that you can pull the bell off and then pull this out so I got the power steering pump off. This is the other bolt hole that I was talking about. And I took the pulley off because the new pump doesn't come with a pulley. So I'm about to throw this on, put the pulley on, put the belt back on, then tighten up the pulley bolts. Got the new power steering pump on. Make sure all the lights are tight. So we didn't already so far. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was gonna leave it orange. I'm about to just paint it black. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we just got the valve cover all primed up. Well, Sean and Jermaine did because I didn't do a damn thing. As usual. Don't worry. <laughs> right. About to spray it wrinkled black. Jermaine's about to spray it wrinkled black. We can't even open the damn can. You ready? You ready for this? Wow. Come on, man, get in there. The can's bad? Bro. <laughs> the the AutoZone special, the can's already broken. I'm scared, you <laughs> Shit. See, this is why you steal things. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I would have stole this. <laughs> So yesterday, we painted the valve cover wrinkle black. It didn't come out too bad. There are some imperfections, but this valve cover is definitely better than the other valve cover because it didn't have the studs. The last one didn't have the studs for the coil packs. So now all the coil packs are pretty much secured. And it looks way better too than the last one. Also, I was driving the car last night with the new power steering pump and that shit is valid. I could actually control my car turning and parking and all that stuff. So it's way better than it was before. I just took a drive to Queens. I lost my front trim and on my way here, the damn coupler came off again. So hopefully Spencer got, huh? Oil? It was. Okay, pull in the driveway. Spencer it's looking out for me. He got me a clamp. Thank you, sir. No problem. No problem. Hopefully, no problem. this thing doesn't fall off again. Barely that fucking car. My boy Joe messing with his. Uh, tell him what you got here, Joe. Tell him what's going on. A little little big turbo 180. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Just yeah. a cool modest. 500 wheel, some some like. Tell them what you did to the motor. Oh, um, fully built head, dual valve springs, um, super tank pistons. Um, we got rods, 
These are just really good for like 700 horsepower, so I'm probably, I'm just going to look for a nice 500. Right, right. right now, and what you getting done? Right now, I'm working with the Tommy belt. I have my, thank, thank God, I have my man Spence <laughs> looking over the, uh, you know, looking over my novice work. Yeah. So my cam gear was a little old. Spencer to the rescue? Crooked. Yeah, Spence to the rescue for a fact. <laughs> My cam gear was sitting crooked, so luckily I had a spare one from the old head. Yeah. I just went and saved myself seventy five dollars, slapped that one on there. So now I'm redoing the timing. He or I all I'm doing really is the uh, the downpipe. Yeah. And that's it really. Once I get the downpipe intake pipe done, wire up the throttle body, this thing is good to go. That's what you're saying, up and running by the end of the day? Running. Oh, I, I don't know about the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. It's, uh, anything can happen with this shit, bro. So yeah. I, I would like for it to be running by the end of the day, but... What ECU like, are you running like, next? Tell them oh, what ECU. Oh, show them, tell them what it's like. Two in there, two. Tell them what it's like. Come on over here and see what we got tucked up over here. Right, so that's the ECU, that's Masters? Get the dust off of there. Yeah, Max ECU. Max ECU. ECU. It's, it's wicked. Yeah, I got it. Best bank for your buck, ECU standalone. Right. Like, it's like, it's up there. It's not a lot of guys who in the states here that run it, but like overseas, they, they yeah. fuck with these hard though. And I've seen 180s put in work with these shits. Too. Yeah. I've seen boosters. This, this is all real drive or front wheel drive? No, this is front wheel. Right. I'm not keeping this shell. This, this shell is just for. Yeah, you know, everything. Who wired up the EC for you? It's plug and plug. It's plug and plug. Yeah. yeah, you get the kit. Well, you have to get the kit. There's a, a harness. I got you. This harness is separate. But it's plug and plug. The only. Spence over here, turbo and every E46 possible. Yeah, still gotta, um, I gotta make the downpipe for this one. Uh, this is a rapid spool manifold that has been modified. It was originally for the E30 and the E34 chassis. Yeah. Um, so it's a little testing thing going on here and I'm gonna try and make the AC lines work. I'm gonna make some custom AC lines for this car yeah. as well first day it got here it originally came for vacuum lines and whatnot and it ended up turning into a complete rebuild of the turbocharged system so this car was supercharged before or was always it was turbocharged? um it was turbocharged but it was on a bottom mount kit an obx manifold yeah um, so <coughs> this manifold right here it's a uh, OBX manifold. It had multiple weld repairs on it. It was kind of crappy. Um, he wasn't able to boost. He came in with an EML light. So we took this off and we realized it wasn't the right fit. And the drain issue, the draining wasn't done properly to this car as well either. Yeah. So we decided to go for a top mount and do, try something out new. A little unconventional, some yeah. people might say. I've seen you guys take off the manifold and put it on yeah. inside the car. How was that? Yeah, so we took it off um, because we wanted to extend the T4 flange. Yeah. Originally, it sat all the way back here, and that just wasn't going to cut it for this car. Yeah. Since it's the S54 E46 chassis. Yeah. So um, we had to bring it forward. I did that, and I created a little gusset to support the pipe, Schedule 10. Yeah. And uh, so far, so good. I got to create a downpipe for it, but... The way that this manifold was designed, it's not going to be able to keep a uh, three and a half inch exhaust, so I'm going to have to go three inch yeah. and fit it in there. It's going to be a tight fit, if you can see. Yeah. Um, also sent out the valve cover, the intake manifold runners to get powder coated in this nice orange, and I just finished sending out the uh, compressor cover as well to get done in the same orange. Yeah. It should look really nice. Going to put a Funk Motorsport um, heat sleeve. Or turbo blanket for right here and uh that's about it make the charge pipe down pipe and it's out of here yeah From florida this is um that one guy that be here i know he is he sells the dogs yeah yeah so this car came from florida it's getting a complete new um chassis harness custom yeah. chassis harness uh, the owner hasn't decided if he wanted to switch, you know, switch, but it's gonna give the switch uh, shade bay look and whatnot. Yeah. And we got a freshly built S52 waiting to go in, bottom end built, cut ring head gasket, rapid spool manifold, um, 68R from Boost Lab. So after that, Matt is gonna tune it. So 
I need an oil drain like that. Yeah. So the car has been misfiring. So Matt is on the job on his day off when he's trying to relax. Thinking maybe it's the spark plugs that are bad. Also, I swapped out the clamp to a better clamp, so this should definitely hold way better than the last clamp was. So I just changed the plugs and the kind of sounds a bit better now. Matt just gave me the keys to the Evo. What is this, Matt? What's going on here? <laughs> I've never driven an Evo before, so I don't even know how to start the car. What the? Okay. I'm gonna have to make a phone call. I'm confused. What is this? Oh. Not in gear. Oh, I'm in gear. Shit. <laughs> Where is neutral? Okay, neutral's right here. Bro. Why does neutral look like I'm in second gear right now? Alright, valid. <laughs> Wait, I've never driven a Evo. Well, I actually have. I've driven an Evo 10, but it wasn't manual. It was paddle shifts. And I don't think... It was built like how this car is built. First time driving an Evo. Matt's in my car up there, just checking the logs and everything, making sure it all is well. Uh, it's not bad. The clutch is not what I expected it to be. But I actually have driven, I've driven an Evo 8 or 9, I think. But it was like, on like a stage for a clutch and that shit was ridiculous but this is not bad i don't know if i get one of these matt need to fix his damn rear windshield tent or whatever he got going on i can't see nothing behind me we changed the spark plugs and it was working fine for a little bit and then it just started acting up again i'm thinking maybe the idle control valve needs to get cleaned or i have a boost leak that i need to check and figure out so I'm going to check that on a different day. So with that being said, like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Peace.